This is The Daily Strike with your host, David Cheminsky. We're here in Naperville, home of the Young Entrepreneurs Network. Today we have a very special guest, Brian Bear Butler. Hello. How are you doing today, man? I'm great. How about you? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. Thank Good. you for joining us today. Episode no 003. 003. 003. Nice. How's your day going? Pretty good. Finally had some food. Shout out to Jimmy John's. They're uh, gargantuan. Freaky fast. They weren't freaky fast. Not Remember at all. we were sitting there waiting for what seemed like an eternity. Jimmy John's, you need to fix that. Go faster. We'll order more from you. We'll put you on the podcast, but yes. you need to be freaky fast like you say. Very fast. So awesome, man. So you're a man of many talents and many interests. Yeah. It's tiring. <laughs> <laughs> You're a busy man. It's tiring. What made you really jump into the entrepreneurial route? Actually, I answered that question today on social medias. Um, I'm a person that doesn't do well with taking orders. And I think it all started from when I was really, really, really young. I was just never, uh, I don't want to say team player, but more of just not a follower, I guess. More, I'm. I guess you would call it the. Um, what is the word that people use? Uh, independent. A type personality. A type personality. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means, but I think I fit that. I don't know. I've never heard of that Take specific the lead. stance. Always leader. Oh, you're a lone wolf. That too. Oh yeah. Lone wolf. Yeah, very lone. Well, not super lone, but. <laughs> you roll in a pack, but you know. I just, I feel like I can take the lead and people trust me when I take the lead. That's good. Because then I just start executing and everyone sees the results and it's like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. And I feel very comfortable while taking the lead in almost anything I do. Even if I don't know how to do it, I'll figure out how to do it. I like problem solving stuff. Interesting. Interesting. Which led me into creating my business. Which is? Wrenches Mobile Auto Repair. So you you have a quite a quite a bit of experience with cars. Yes, um, started tinkering with my own at seventeen, so that was like two thousand four. <laughs> Damn it, that's a long time ago. <laughs> that's a while ago. <laughs> two thousand four, I got my first car and started just did my own brakes i was like let's see what happens i'm gonna tear it apart and put it back together dude i could not imagine i don't know a thing i know a little bit about cars but like i was raised by a single mom and she was busy working 100 percent. but same with mine i just never had interest in cars now my favorite car hands down is a rolls royce which i mean those cars take what six months to make i don't even know or something like that that's like my favorite car but it's too bougie for me i do not know a thing about cars so what uh what really made me kind of made you jump into a car business what excites you was it the like the engineering behind it or um there's it's, it's actually i always thought to myself like i don't think i'd ever solve a problem but i i this business solves the problem of a very busy person who you can once they leave work they have zero time to do anything else but go home or go grocery shopping or make dinner or whatever it may be um and too busy in the morning they drop the kids off at school to clean the house do whatever whatever it is they got there's no time and when you go to the auto shop where i worked for many 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 years they will leave their car there for hours and hours and they're without a car most of the time and some people can't afford to get a rental car some people don't have an extra car they don't have the luxuries of those things so by working in the shop, I noticed this, and if it wasn't for a mentor of mine who recently passed away, R.I.P. Next um, in peace. He kind of was just like, "Dude, just take the leap. Like, you know what you want to do." And that was me going to people's homes and businesses, fixing their car on location, while they were going about their day, basically. So you kind of made it accessible to a lot of people. Very accessible, yes. Because I'll be honest with you, I'm not. I don't know if I'm really comfortable sitting in, you know, when you go to like an auto shop and you have to sit in their small little lobby, yeah. like it's intimidating for most people. Yeah. And honestly, they don't know anything about their car. Yeah. And they're having these people tell them that their car is broken and they're just not understanding why it's broken. They don't even like, do you believe them? You know what I yeah. Mean? Like, I, I totally understand. I mean, and a lot of people, nuts. there's like a thing about people getting ripped off too. Yeah, Cause like a lot of doubt, they know that you don't know what you're, you know what the hell you brought your car in for. So they're going right. to come up with like yeah. 10 different things that are broken yeah, and you don't like, know anybody. Oh, I got this noise. I don't know what it is. Can you figure it out? And then the next thing he comes out, it's like, Oh, it's your lower control arm link pin, you know, subframe 
bushing is broken you're like what <laughs> is this stuff i but, couldn't i don't even understand one thing you just said but it sounds like a lot of stuff's broken <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot there's there's a lot of moving parts on a vehicle and your car will always break i don't care if it's a bmw or mercedes god forbid a mini cooper worst car ever made Worst car ever made. Um, worst car ever made is the Mini Cooper. I've replaced an engine on one specific Mini Cooper four times. Jeez. Four times. Give me a break. Honestly, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with you on the worst car ever made. I think the worst car ever made, I'm going to add on to that, Good. is those old school cop cars that get resold. And Dude, like you're driving, you're playing Vic? music. Yeah, you're playing music. That and is the You look in your window and you're like, oh shit. Ever made. You turn your music down real low. And not that I'm guilty of anything or you're guilty of anything, but you just get scared. Like, oh my God, you know what I mean? Like. They're just hidden back there. And then it's just some random kid driving a car yeah, that they bought for $800. That is the absolute worst. They still have the, the light in there and stuff. Yep. My buddy had a, uh, what was it, 95, 96 Chevy Caprice that had the light on it still, too. He would mess people up. We'd go out on the road Dude, and just mess with right. people with it. you get in trouble for that. You give someone a heart attack, man. Yeah, that was 2000, like, that was 2003, 2004. Yeah, it was when I had, right when I got my, my first car. It was 87 Cutlass Supreme. Oldsmobile, that was the shit. Interesting. Such a dumb car. Now, with your car business too, with it being mobile and you're yeah. coming to, you know, whether it's the office, the house, what was you know, what was the uh, consumer's first reaction to it? I mean, because it's different. You know what I mean? I can literally tell you what they almost all universally say, and I don't want to sound arrogant or anything. This is what they say to me. I try to be as humble as I can, but as soon as I even mention what I do to someone, the idea, or if they, once they find me, they go, that is a genius idea. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, no, it's not. Other people do it too. Like I'm not the only one, but when you look on Google, I am the only one who does it professionally and does it, who does it to a level of like, I have a nice logo. I have a nice web. Well, I had a nice website. We'll get into that later. But my Facebook is set up nicely. I have nice photos of myself and work, and I have, I think I have like 41 five-star reviews right now. Wow. Not a single four. If someone goes and puts a four on them, I'd be really upset. <laughs> <laughs> he will find yeah, you. I will find you. And, and he will, will kill take, you. No, I'll take your tires <laughs> off. <laughs> He'll take your tires I'll off and resell them. I'll take your tires them. off and resell them. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah, no, I just... I just made it look nice because mechanics are known as the grease monkey yep. and you know they're drunks and it's true it's true <laughs> like I'm not gonna deny there's that. not I have met a lot of mechanics working in one shop it's always a revolving door with people they're not the most creative type I've l- been lucky to dabble in music I play guitar keyboard I've been in many bands I've recorded bands for years um, I used to draw really well gave that up though and just done a lot of creative things and the mechanics was an oddly creative thing for me because i was able to use my hands which is awesome you could get dirty and actually accomplish something and you are i don't know how to explain it like like there's pieces of on a car that come off and they're so dirty and rusty and gross you put a new piece in it's like that looks really nice. Like when you <laughs> when you see a brand new car and you look at the underneath, it is a piece of art. It's Essentially, everything yeah. is the tolerances on cars are so so close. If anything is just off a little bit, it's not gonna run. Forget about it. Not run. It's gonna squeak. It's gonna knock. It's, it's got to be placed strategically and correctly and tightly, or your pro your car is probably gonna blow up. Yeah, your blinker fluid's going to leak out. <laughs> <laughs> See, this type of stuff I don't know, man. So it's, it's good to have honest people like yourself. That's another in, thing. In a business that's sometimes can be yes. frowned upon. You yeah, know? and I wanted to change it a little bit, at least with the people that I could reach, give them full honesty. I'm not coming up to them and be like, well, this, this, and that's broke. I do, but it's the truth. Like, perfect example, actually. Today I was doing breaks on a very, very, very awesome customer of mine doing the brakes, did a tune-up, and while I was doing the brakes, I was able to take the tire off, I was able to see the rest of the inside of the suspension and notice that both sides of the tire rods were loose. It's the part that is connected to the steering wheel that allows you to turn the wheel. Very important piece. Also very cheap piece, so it's really strange how that works. Um, she was in the position to hear that after I'm. she's already paying for brakes, paying for a tune-up. last thing you want to hear is, oh, by the way... Your tie rods are loose. This is going to cost you another few hundred dollars. 
Sorry. But there's a there's a better way to go around it, I guess, or to ease it in. And a lot of shops won't do that. They'll just tell you, you need this. This is broken. Blah, 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 blah. So instead, you can easily be like, all right, sorry, Lanusser, but your tie rods seem to be loose. You have some time left on them, though, but you want to do them soon. Could be a safety hazard. And once you give them that air to breathe, like, okay, so it's not urgent. It's not urgent. Everyone thinks when the car's broke, it's urgent. Usually not. And I was like, you have at least a month on this. Like, I gave her the price on it, told her it's not a huge deal. Just don't go doing donuts or something crazy, and you should be fine. And um, lo and behold, she texts me on my way home. She's like, just set me up for next week. We'll get it done on a Tuesday or something like that. So I was like, all right, done deal. Handled. No pressure. Let them, you know, just digest it. And then it's all it's all gravy from there. Now, do you build like a really personal relationship with a lot of your customers as well? Very personal. She had lunch ready for me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which was pretty awesome. Wow. Yeah. So some customers treat me really well. Um, I have one customer, every time I fix their car, they make me a pie. Actually, this last time they made me chili. Ooh. I something going back to their container. That's like next level. Yeah. That's like next level customer, like... In in customer service in general, because that's essentially what it is. We're in an industry where it's customer service. You you serve. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of it, a lot of pressure is put on you as the uh, business owner to execute, right? Yes. To satisfy them. But like that's such a game changer. Where a customer, they know you're gonna you're, you're gonna do excellent work. So not only are they gonna yes. pay you, but I'm gonna make you some homemade chili. Yes. That would make me go so much harder. Like the yeah. hustle, you just hustle so much harder because you know. I don't, it's, just, it's just like that extra little thing that helps so much. If if you don't have the urge to go that extra mile for your customer, probably should not be doing what you're doing. Very true. Like, Very true. Like uh, Jake, he he went and helped paint the guy's house. He took the time out to do that. What? I never heard of anyone <laughs> doing that. Like, dude, that's what you have to. You have to be obsessed with that. I am obs- I am obsessed with that. I answer. I have customers texting me in the middle of the night random questions about the car it's 10 30 i'm like why why are you awake take the time i don't care who's yelling at me at the time that i'm on my phone just do it just text them back you yeah may, you may be a little angry because you're sleeping or you're just resting you just want to be done with the day just take two seconds just text them as as patiently as you can yeah and they will forever just be in your debt i must in my honest opinion I feel like that applies to not only business, but life too. Like, yes. just take that extra time. Like you'll notice too, like I'll, I'll, I'll take the time to like open the door for people or I'll take the time to like yeah. thank people for like the little things. I feel yep. like that, that little stuff matters. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. will, will go such a long way. Cause like you never know what like the next person's dealing with, you know what I mean? Or what they're going through. Yeah. So that little, you know, that little 30 seconds you spent, you know, worrying about their personal being, whether it's opening a door or whatever it is. That's gonna go such a long way, whether it's in the business world or you know in life. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's all easy stuff. Very easy. The problem is no one, no one is truly aware of it constantly. Like I have enough anxiety. I'm aware of all these things all the time. And I tr- and I always remind myself like if I'm dealing with someone who's not happy, they're not, they're not happy for a reason. Yeah. And it's not their fault most of the time. So just. That's my other thing about being in business. Just be aware of yourself and how you're going to talk to someone else because it can come off really wrong. Yeah. You got to be then, really... Then it's just like, forget about it. You got to be really careful of kind of what it's you say good. and how you say it. I'm a firm believer in karma too. Like Me too. I don't know. It's just... I'm not saying I've, I have the perfect track record, but throughout life, you just realize that like, it's just better to do things with good intentions rather than the wrong intentions because I feel like at the end of the yeah. day, you know... I'm not trying to get screwed over because I can only imagine how that feels. I kind of just right. had to put myself in the other person's shoes and realize, you know what? Wow, that was wrong or this is wrong. And this could have been, you know, gone about a totally different way. So mm-hmm. karma karma is scary sometimes, but it yeah. really puts everything in perspective for you. It follows me very closely. Yeah. It's, like it's within a, seconds. <laughs> within seconds. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Weird. So... Another uh, business you have too. You're you're really into photography. Let's talk about that. Yeah, that's a funny one. Um, it's just literally years of people being like, "Dude, you have an eye for this stuff." And it's it was a lot of it was just off my phone. And 
it took uh, my buddy Scott. What's up, Scott? Shout um, out to Scott. Shout out to Scott Albert. He <laughs> lives in Portland now. He is uh, he's he is the most interesting man in the world. Quite, quite. Um, either way, one day we were uh, rock climbing and he was just like, dude, just get a camera. Just get one already. Like he's the kind of guy who will just tell you, just just do it. Just do it. Just just do it. <laughs> don't be don't be you know, just do it. And I'm like, no, oh, fine. And uh, I had some money saved, so I went he told me about this place called uh Central Camera, I believe it is. It's the oldest camera shop, I believe, in Chicago. Wow, is Start- it still open? Yeah. Started in like eighteen ninety one or something. Wow. It's downtown Chicago, right on Wells under the I think it's Wells, under the train. We'll tag him in this uh this video yeah, we can podcast. Try. I don't even know if they have social media. They're so <laughs> old over there. But uh, yeah, I went in there. I bought a Canon Rebel T6. Um, not the greatest camera in the world, but it's it's a DSLR and it works. Um, purchased that and then just started shooting everything I can possibly find. Mainly the dog. <laughs> it's a good one to practice on. It's like, sit still. So, click, click, click. If you go through my phone, you're going to find so many dogs. It's picks. hard not to. Dogs are cute. They're adorable. Dogs are adorbs. Um, yeah, so my photography led to that. And then I travel a lot and usually out west where everything is photogenic. And um, the first trip that I took was with my uh, buddy Kyle Kells, who we will have on this podcast uh, soon. He. Um, does custom woodworking so he makes tables interesting for people and they buy them and then he will deliver them so we delivered one to spokane washington and on the way there you have to go through montana and on through montana there's a uh, grizzly bear sanctuary and i actually took one of my greatest photos on accident there i um, didn't know how to work the camera i'm just like messing with settings and then like i took a picture of this bear in this enclosure and to this day everyone's like this is your best photo and now i'm thinking to myself i'm like i've been doing this for two years now and that's my best photo like on accident so i suck <laughs> stop no it's and when i look back at it i'm like it's not sharp it's blurry completely out of focus everything's wrong it's just the color the colors looked really nice people have different eyes though for certain things yeah, though i've learned a lot of people like color yeah my a lot of my photos are very muted i like a muted easy tone of uh cold and despair coming on your instagram page yeah what what is your instagram page too as well oh that is where's the bear so where's the bear yeah or if you just type in brian bear butler you'll see uh, a logo that kind of looks like my face except there's a camera here (laughs) (laughs) can't miss it um yeah a lot of coyotes which led me into that tone of dark and cold and it's it's winter time true so a lot of my editing kind of goes with the seasons um in the summertime there's a lot of deer a lot of um raccoons possum do you like wildlife fucking love wildlife i definitely have a a heart for wildlife like i volunteer at the wildlife center in glen ellen oh wow every monday morning i'm there for four hours cleaning up poop from every animal we have owls in there interesting uh red tail hawks and this thing called the raptor loop Ooh. it's like the size of this room no it's even bigger than this it's like the size of the whole building and the lot and these birds can fly in this giant loop where they can rehab and get back to flying again so they'll come in with like hurt legs messed up eyes sickness their wings are messed up and um the loop allows them to just fly so I have to go in there. I have to take out their food they haven't eaten, replace it with new fresh food. And when you walk in, they'll just start flying around. And they're coming inches from your head. Like today, an owl came by. Its wing just but grazed my beanie. I was like, holy cow. And are they friendly too? Are they, they're not. They're not going to try to attack you. Okay. They will always, most, most, I'm not liable for anything that happens to you. <laughs> most animals will try and bluff you they don't really ever no animal wants to fight just like human beings no human being wants to ever really fight no. we, we always tend to like you know try to be Stick, big stand our ground yeah like we just we'll talk a lot of crap we'll make ourselves look bigger we'll make a lot of noise just to try to scare the thing off we want to scare it off first and that's what animals do 
It sounds like a lot of videos I see on like Facebook and Instagram. These like pointless videos that have no meaning. Just <laughs> people trying to like make loud noises and look tough. <laughs> Test the animal kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> I, we are we we are animals. We're just we are just like animals, but we're just so removed from it that people forget how animalistic we are all the time. Like it's we are no different than a raccoon. No different than a raccoon. We have disposable hands. We like to eat, poop. Yes. And sleep. Make a lot of noise. Make a lot of noise. Yeah. Stinky little. Don't get a ra- pet raccoon. They stink. Nah, I don't know, man. I've seen a lot of cute raccoon videos. Yeah. I don't know. We get a lot of little raccoons in there. Like uh, at the beginning of summer when everything's being, beginning of the springtime, everything's being born. The wildlife center is just littered with raccoons and squirrels because they are the most orphaned animal there is because of humans and other things as well. kind of change our ways but mainly humans i don't know my girlfriend and i we we watch a lot of animal videos on facebook together and i see all these cute videos with raccoons and like how they interact with like dogs and yeah. i don't know man if i could sit on the couch and eat some peanuts with a raccoon and he's just using his hands casually i don't know i'm absolutely that should be all right I, you need if i can get you into the wildlife center and so you can see what they actually really do. It's quite disturbing. I'm I'm sure it is. I, I'm very sure. I remember uh, kind of a personal story. We went uh, for Christmas. We went back to my girlfriend's uh, fam- to go see family in Michigan. And uh, the dogs are in the backyard or whatever. And I see them like surrounding this possum on the ground. I didn't know it was a possum <laughs> at first though. And me not logically thinking, I didn't realize possums play dead. Yeah. I just didn't cross my mind. Sometimes. Some, sometimes, sometimes they are dead. They sometimes they aren't. bite the shit out of you. Well, here's the thing, though. It's like I see him surrounding something, so I run out there. And I'm like, get away from me. You know what I mean? So I get the dogs away from it, and I see this possum on the ground, and it looks dead. Like, it looks like it's yeah. like halfway dead, halfway not dead. So I'm like, let me put it out of its misery. So I grab oh, a shovel. No. Yes, I grab a shovel, and I, I whack it because I'm like, you know, Bella probably grabbed it. You know, Bella's American Akita, you know, and she, I thought she just her. shook it to death. And I was like, let me just put it out of its misery. You know what I mean? I hit it, hit it right on its head. I pick it up with a shovel. I put it in the trash. And little did I know, the next day, I go to check on the trash. This thing's alive. And it's chilling in there, like, comfortably happy in the trash because it's warm in there and there's food. And I'm like, I thought I killed you. Let me tell you a little something about a possum. <laughs> when, they, when they play dead, they literally go, become paralyzed. And they can't undo it. It takes hours for them to undo what they did. <laughs> they literally scared themselves shitless. They, they, yeah, they, they basically harden up. They're still conscious. They still know what's going on, but they physically cannot undo that. It takes hours. And Jeez, it, it, it's the dumbest mechanism I've ever known. They only live two years long. They don't. They don't live very long. Oh wow. Yeah, two years. Very quick lifespan. Yep. We actually we just had a possum in the wildlife center that got ran over by a car. Its head oh, was wow. ran over by a car, and it lived. It's still in there. Poop it in its cage. The first possum poo is the worst smelling thing I've ever smelled in my life. <laughs> the worst smelling thing ever. Though they're hardy animals, so you hitting it was it was probably like, ah, that's all you got. That's all you got. Yeah. Dude, you can't kill a possum. I thought I did. But they're really good I for us wrong. too. They eat all the ticks. They clean up all the things that die on the forest floor in your backyard. They clean up the grubs that eat and destroy your lawn, like Skunks do the same thing. You see skunks, skunks digging in your backyard. Let them dig. They're eating the crap that's destroying your lawn. They are literally your landscapers. <laughs> Leave them alone. Let Free them eat. landscapers. Let them do their thing, and you won't have to deal with your shitty lawn. Now, with being very passionate about wildlife, very, obviously, very um, <laughs> which is awesome. I mean, dude, I I love it. Um, in what ways do you think, as a community, we should raise awareness? And the reason this question really got formulated is I was on the way to school. I go to a COD mm-hmm. and I see two um, coyotes on the side of the road. And they're just walking casually on the side of the road and one's limping. And it's just like, I wasn't like upset, but it kind of frustrated me a little bit. You know what I mean? I was just like, why are they so close to the road? You know what I mean? And I think a part of it has to do is there's not a lot of awareness in the community that you know these animals live lives too you know what i mean they're doing what they're meant to do but i don't think they're meant to be that close to the road they're not and it's usually because they get pushed in that general direction right and to be honest with you they know that that is the easiest way to walk around and um the wild is even in the suburbs is not easy for animals like a lot of animals come in with broken limbs 
from just falling out of trees, trying to catch food. A lot of coyotes will get their jaws broken from uh, jumping up and diving on their food. Um, they, you, wait, do they, they do that to themselves? Yeah, the, the, I mean, they can smash into a rock or something and mess their nose up and Jeez. things like that. But it's it's usually pretty rare. But um, dude, they have a hard life, even in the burbs. Like, they're just trying to literally survive. Yeah, they're trying just not like to any, die. any other animal out there. Yeah, and they're, to live. they're on the edge far more than we are. We are so far away from the edge of death. Like, we're just like, we don't even think that we're going to die. Like people don't think that you're gonna, they don't think they're gonna die most of the time. Animals every day of their life, I need it. to survive today. How am I going to survive today? And if it takes a coyote walking down the side of the road to easily get to his next spot, because they have territories that is, that are invisible to us, he can't leave that territory. If he leaves that territory, another coyote's gonna come and mess him up. Probably why he had a messed up leg. Could have easily gotten. In a tango with another coyote in the wrong territory. Yeah, it could have been hit by a car. <laughs> Stay on your side, player. Who knows? And <laughs> same thing with uh, like birds. Like a lot of red-tailed hawks, they have their own spot, their own territory. Don't want to leave your territory. Like it's gonna happen. Interesting. Interesting. Now to kind of jump away from the wildlife. Not that I don't like talking about the wildlife. That's fine. We can actually. Let me ask you one more question. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have a favorite animal? Coyote. Coyote. Yeah. My favorite animal: the lion. I've always wanted a pet lion. Still do to this day. People think I'm crazy. You should go to Africa then. I always wanted to go on a safari. That'd be awesome. I would totally love that. But what really, really gets me into like wanting to have a lion is like you see those videos online of people that are like laying with lions and playing with them and swimming with them. Like I saw a video of a dude swimming with a polar bear the other day. That's crazy. That's never been heard of. And like it just it's because they raise them as cubs. Yeah. And they assemble that like father figure that, you know, that, uh, that dominant figure in that animal's life. And they're yep. like, Oh, that's my parent. Like, why would I hurt my parent? All right. Dude. Sometimes it goes south. Oh, hundred percent. They're unpredictable animals. They're going to do what they, they're going to do what animals do. But dude, I would love to just chill and cuddle with a lion. Did and, you hear about the guy in Colorado that strangled a mountain lion with his bare hands? I think I read something about that. The guy in Fort Collins in this open space, I've been there before. I've been where he was, he was running down the trail and he heard a noise and usually when you hear noise it's like a squirrel squirrels sound a thousand times larger than they are in the woods turned around and there's a mountain lion in the air jumping at him oh man the mountain lion got him in the arm and somehow this guy got it to the ground uh was literally doing jujitsu to it (laughs) pinned its legs and the lion was biting its arm and started putting him into like a headlock and he put his his uh, the dude put his foot on the li- the back of the mountain lion's neck and waited for it to stop breathing. That is intense. This dude killed the mountain lion with his bare hands. Do you but think he? Do you see he wrong for that, or is he? Is he's it, not because that's ethical. life or death. Yeah, very and true. They later found out this mountain lion was only, I think it was like six to nine months old. Wow. Weighed, yeah, it weighed like 50, 70 pounds. So this mountain lion just. It's probably famished, didn't know what was going on, needed food, and just a little too ballsy, I guess. You went after the first thing you saw. Yeah, <laughs> fucking wrong runner. <laughs> All right, so lifestyle living out of a camper. What's 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 up with that? I've kind of uh, saw some of your posts. I see your t-shirt you're wearing right now. Like, kind oh, yeah. of go in depth a little about. about. Camper trampers. Camper trampers. Let's go into uh, depth a little about that. It's a really... Where do I start? The, what, what I, the way I look at it is it's it's, been a mi- long time it's, coming. it's minimalism and simplicity, I feel, yeah. at its finest. But it all started when I was 21. 21. When I was your age, 10 years ago. That's when I started I'm thinking, 22, but 11 years. Same, same. <laughs> <laughs> same, same. Same, same, but different. <laughs> uh, no, I've always wanted, I've always joked around with my family, like, I want to live in the woods. Like, I want to live off the grid. You know what I mean? I want to, like, just... I want to go fishing for food. Like, I just want to, like, do that. Man, man versus wild? Yeah, like, it just, the romanticism of it sounded really good. Okay. And, um, like, I've been backpacking multiple days through the mountains. I've been camping everywhere. I've been all over the West. Like, I've I've traveled, and I, and I, still, I still have this little urge of wanting to explore more and see new things. Every time I look at a map, I'm like, what is this little spot? I need to see what it looks like, and I want to go. 
doing this and traveling the entire United States of America with my girlfriend and our two cats is um, the answer to all that. We have the campers our home. We have it outfitted with bamboo floors and live edge tables for our, our desks. And it's, it's nicer than my home, which is hilarious. <laughs> and yeah, to downsize everything, like have... I have all, all the clothes that I own right now are in a small three-drawer plastic container you'd buy at Walmart. That's all my clothes I have. I have a few things hanging, but those are all going to go to donation. Right. Um, we don't have a bed. We sleep on the floor. Sleep on the bare floor. Yeah. Well, not exactly bare floor, but like I have a thin camping mat that kind of like is my barrier, and then like a comforter over that, and then just... Yeah, so it's not terrible. A comforter. It's actually quite comfortable. I'm, honestly, I'm, I could totally just like land down on the floor with a blanket and a pillow and like pass out. Yeah, my um, when I was sleeping on a bed, I'd wake up and I would have these stabby pains all over my back. Pfft, nothing now. I pop out off the floor. I have to physically get up off the floor. Do a push up. Yeah, off the floor. and that alone just wakes you up and you're just ready to go. And there is scientific proof of why sleeping on the floor is actually better for you. It's better for your back. It's better for you're in everything you yeah just google it it's pretty amazing um, <laughs> google it like you do for everything else google yeah it. right but at the same time we're like let's just get a japanese style bed and it's literally just a rollout that's about that thick and it rolls up when you're not using it and it rolls out into a queen size area and it's actually very comfortable it's just like sleeping in a big cloud so we'll be getting one of those instead sounds nice it's gonna be great and uh yeah we're minimizing quite a bit What's your opinion on that? Do you feel like minimalizing and simplifying, whether it's your way of life, your your it's wardrobe, not, is the way yeah. to go? It's not for everyone. I like things to be minimal only because I like efficiency so much. I like to, I like to know where everything is at. I can grab it real quick, get it done, just boom, 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 boom. Um, and I just don't need a lot of stimulation with a lot of things and I don't need to buy things and you've you've heard of retail therapy like yeah I I go out for a hike and I'm fine basically like I just don't need a lot of I don't need the newest thing I don't need the freshest thing like I have $130 Columbia boots on but they're going to last me 4 years right I won't be buying I bought these for my birthday in November and the boots I had before this you can pretty much see my foot and the bottom of the boot wore them out completely <laughs> So these are going to last me a bunch of years and then the cycle continues. Like I don't need seven pairs of shoes. It's kind of the way I look at it now. I mean, I'll go back like two years ago. I used to be so materialistic. Like I need the next pair of Vans. I need yeah. this. I need this. I need this. I need this. I used this. to be that way too. And it's just like now I'm just like, dude, I'm cool with like a pair of jeans and like a plain white black t-shirt and you know, the shoes I've had for two years. Like, yeah. I don't know. I just, I think society today especially with all these brands and all this hype and all this clout consume, behind certain consume, brands consume consume consume, consume, consume. Buy, like, buy, buy. it's just crazy like you don't need that like supreme no. sticker for your laptop no, you don't God, need no. those two thousand dollar jeans or like whatever it is no. like if you can do that like more power to you like that's awesome you know what i mean like if i had the money like yeah whatever but there's just bigger and better things to invest your money into. And I just think that stuff's just a waste of time. Like people need to start investing in themselves. That's a hundred percent what it is, is, and I, it, Oh man, it goes right back to business is that people are so quick to invest in like, or spend their money on these expensive materialistic things, but they don't want to invest in their friend's business. They don't want to support their friend's business. They don't yeah. want to start their own business. Like, right. like invest in, in the long term, not the short term, even, you know, even business aside, there's a lot of folks that I talk to, her first question is usually, "Are you in town?" <laughs> like that's how much out of town I I I can be, and I used to be. Recently, not so much anymore because of the camper thing of having to save money and all logistics and that. But people literally ask me like, "Are you in town?" And then it usually leads to them being like, "How do you do it? Like, how are you always on vacation somewhere?" And, and first off, for me, it's not vacation. It's just I'm just adventuring to a new place. I want to see. I want to check it out. And then I always refer to tell them like. If you invest in yourself, you will have way more time to go out and do the things you want to do. A lot of times, I'm just driving a couple hours away. Galena, um, Mississippi Palisades, up north of Wisconsin, UP, Michigan. Like These are all small little trips you take in the weekends. I tell people all the time, invest in yourself. That doesn't mean 
you have to buy yourself a life coach. You doesn't mean you have to eat right, even though you should eat right. Um, just say, fuck it. Take a weekend trip up north. Turn your phone off. Have fun with your wife and kids. Mm-hmm. Completely, you know, just you, you give them your undivided attention. Get in tune with your inner self. Yeah, just go hang out in like uh, Port Washington, Wisconsin. Like no one has ever heard of that place, but yeah. it is gorgeous. It's on the lake. It's old school. A lot of old shipping, like uh, boats used to go there. It looks, it's has an old like old pirate vibe almost. Jack Sparrow. It's a dope little place. And you can just go there for the weekend, get a cheap little hotel, have nice food on the water. And it's like, you feel like you're living the life. Yeah. Instead of cleaning your house on the weekend, running errands, getting groceries, uh, do, just take a few extra, take an extra hour every day of the week and do that during the week. Give yourself the weekend off. Go somewhere. Yeah. Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself so that you can do those things. Yeah. And eventually you can buy a camper and you do it full time. <laughs> you just travel the world. I'll consult you. Awesome, man. Awesome. So finally, too, you also have a podcast editing business as well. <laughs> yeah. I have a audio engineering degree background. I'm producing this podcast right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the man behind the, the madness. Yeah, these are my microphones, actually. That's why I'm <laughs> like, hey. Make love to the microphone. I've recorded over 60 bands with these microphones in the last 10, 8 to 10 years, I would say. So and a lot of mouths have been close to my mouth right yeah, now. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Yeah. Um, and I mean, obviously, podcasting is so huge now. There's over half a million podcasters, and we just added to the bunch. Um, more than 50% are listened to on iTunes. 30% of that, on top of that, is listened to on Spotify, and the remaining is on whatever else and it's like it's just obvious like let's get into business with podcast editing it should be lucrative should keep my gas tank full so i can keep driving my camper around i can do it remotely something you can do at home it's not hard to do i mean it takes a lot of practice to properly edit eq compress master you can't just go and hit a preset because everything is different. If I move over here, I sound different. If I move right here, I sound even more different. If I sound right, like, it's always different. Yeah. Like, all of this I have to fix later. And it just, it took 60 bands, two years of school, and a hell of a lot of trial and error to make it perfect every single time. Interesting. Interesting. It's a lot. There's a lot. You should come by and see it sometime. <laughs> it's, I'm witnessing it. You see these things I'm doing <laughs> on the computer. You're like, what the hell is this? No, I definitely bet, man. I remember. It's wild. I think it was 2016 or 2015. I enrolled in Specs Howard Media School in Southfield, Michigan, mm. and uh, it's a great school, great program. But my issue and the reason I dropped out is because they were teaching such old like techniques and like it just didn't fit. Yeah. I was just so confused. I was like, you guys are so behind into what the now is. What were they? Do you remember what they were doing? Uh, I'd, I'd have to like go back. I have yeah. like a USB of like all okay. the things we had to learn or whatever. But like it just wasn't my fit. You know what I mean? I was just saying that there was a lot of things that they were teaching at my school that I was kind of like. Because I already had the background of audio engineering before I went to school. I I went into there. I, I, would, I didn't tell people that I already have been doing these things. I just went in there like, all right, I'm going to learn. I'm here to learn. And... In year two is when I started learning because this is when I found out that there isn't much to audio engineering. It's a lot of basic stuff. Um, and, yeah, there was a lot of archaic things still going on. Like, these, they, were, they were still teaching how to do reel-to-reel tape. I was like, we'll never use yeah. tape <laughs> ever. I don't know what you're doing right now. And, uh, like, right now we have these little boxes that turn the vibration that's coming out of my mouth into a one and a zero and then vice versa out of speaker into our headphones it's de- you know technology in the world is changing pretty quickly i think that's, quick. that was my issue with you know the way they were teaching it you know no offense to them great school great equipment great program but yeah. just it just didn't fit for me and i feel like i learned more outside of there rather than in there i i oddly regret going to school for this <laughs> I did the biggest thing I got out of it was new friends 
and working in a professional setting. That was that was kind of the nice thing. I was able to see what a professional setting looked like. And I just had this small little studio in my mom's basement. <laughs> but turns out that was professional enough. Yeah. You I had can, all the pro gear there, I, that they had. These days you can download it all on your phone and do it from your phone. Yes. You don't, <laughs> need a, you don't need a million dollar studio anymore. But you should have someone like I who know how to properly do it so it sounds commercial. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. We're going to kind of wrap this up. I want to jump yeah. into some extra questions, some uh, real personal, get your opinion on certain things. Good. Um, and today, especially in today's world with business too, do you think there will you know, there will come a time where all shopping is done online? I mean, I'll even say it. I can't remember the last time I stepped into a grocery store. We use Instacart. They deliver right to our door, get all my groceries, plain I'm, and simple. I'm going in the grocery store after this. I love it. See, I, I, I have lo- to buy ketchup. I love the grocery store. I do, but my girlfriend hates it, and I, I I understand why she doesn't like it. I get it. There's a lot of people there. The lines, like I'm the guy. I like to go to the quick, scan myself, pay. I'm out the door. Boom, yeah. gone. You know what I mean? But I just like the walking around, seeing all the food, and like choosing what I want to cook and what I want to eat. And that's just the fat part of me talking. Like <laughs> I love to eat, man. I'm a foodie minus the pictures. It doesn't last that long. I just destroy it, demolish it. That's it. But I just, that's what I enjoy about it. But you know, with the whole delivering to your door type of thing too. That's crazy. I think it's awesome. But my issue though is I can't rely on these people to pick what I really want. Like yeah. on the app, like I pick like, oh, you know, I want lunch meats. I want turkey and salami. And like, you think they'd give you like, like the pound of it or whatever. <laughs> I literally had a delivery person give me like a single order of like turkey. And I'm like, dude, like, yeah. What do you, see, what would, do you think? I'm no. going to cut this up in 16 small pieces that, and spread that's it out not, through the week? That shit is not good enough yet. <laughs> I, I am 10 years older than you. So I grew up just going to the grocery store. Yeah. I like, I remember I used to push the cart with my grandma in Chicago to go to the grocery store <laughs> and we would push our groceries back. I was the Instacart. <laughs> did you did like, you like run with the cart real fast and get on it and like no, stand I think up it on was it? Rickety as hell. I think came yeah. all the way from Ecuador. Are you kidding oh, me? Oh man. That thing barely had wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Kids got it easy nowadays. Yeah, dude, it's it's crazy Just how go quick. to the damn store. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, even like alcohol, you can have alcohol it's delivered so to your door. See, you have to go to a liquor store. That's more. so bad because, dude, imagine being an alcoholic. You just, you're just going to fucking kill yourself. Yeah, but I mean. You if I still smoke cigarettes, I wouldn't leave the house. If I was smoking cigarettes and I was, I'm most never an alcoholic, but if I was, dude, I'd never leave the house. I'd work from home and I'd just have cigarettes and beer shipped to my house every day. <laughs> just die in there. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't man. like the automation for some things and I like the automation for others. Definitely understand well, that. This, the, future is, the future is scary. Now, is there an event in your life that shaped you most? There's a lot of micro events that add up to now. I, I definitely agree. And actually, I just had to write a paper on this kind of for my philosophy class. And the moment for me personally is being raised by a single mom in watching what she did for my sisters and I and hustled and made sure we had a hot plate every night. Yeah. It just stuck with me forever. And like it gave me that hustler's mentality and the go-getter's mentality to like, you know, you want to go get it. But then it also put my put me in a different perspective to where I would never want to put my kids through that. Yeah. And it's no offense to her cuz I love my mom dearly and she, she, like seriously it, it shaped me as a man today and mm-hmm. i'm thankful for it but i would just never want to put my kids to what we went through this is what's age. just going to make our generations better and better and better and better and better that's why we are getting smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter when your parents are like oh, you're so much smarter than me like yeah we are because <laughs> that's just the nature of this world like when we have kids they're going to be smarter than us yeah it, it's it's living accept through it. experiences. Accept it. Like, 100%. I mean, yeah, you can be 56 years old and be just as smart as your kid, but you have to do the work and keep up. Because it's, it's, it's literally just a revolving door yeah. day in, day out. And, like, I had a single mother as well. My father died when I was six. That That's when I had to put my big boy pants on. I'm, I'm the oldest um, child, and I have a brother and a sister. So, you know, let's 
a lot of responsibility for me. My mom's at work all day. My grandma barely speaks English. I had to learn Spanish at a young age, too. She raised us most of the time. And there's just a lot of struggles throughout my entire life. My mom meeting shitty boyfriends, them for verbally abusing us at wow. the age of 12, 13, doing construction on our summers off from high school. Like, been through a lot of crazy crap. Me and my mentor getting me to start my own business. And now I lead this amazing life because of all of that led up to right now where I'm going to go live in a camper, debt free, literally living my dream of just off the grid, just doing whatever the hell I want. That's got to feel very accompl- like a, like a, like Dude, a really huge accomplishment. It's so wild. That's awesome. It's so crazy. We're going to have a, actually, we'll have a podcast too soon. <laughs> we're working on one. Awesome. That's awesome, man. Now, if you could advise your younger self, what would you say? Like a lesson at some point in your life. Work harder. Listen to anyone who's older than you. Get rid of your friends who don't want to do anything with their life. Just, everyone says weed out the negativity. Do it. Seriously. It's absolutely insane. You are the culmination of your five friends. Like, you are the net worth of all your friends. Like, if you're hanging out with millionaires, you're going to be a millionaire. Yeah. If you hang out with smart people, you're going to be kind of smart. smart. <laughs> Maybe a little bit smart. Who knows? No, I definitely agree. I Just that- listen. Just listen. Just, just listen. Take it in. Don't talk back. Be nice. Be humble. It's not hard. I can literally everything you said literally like was perfect because I would literally tell myself the same thing stop wasting your time with people that don't care about you genuinely yeah. don't add any value to you even if it's your family even if it's your family and put, surround yourself around positivity yeah because like the culture today you, you go online you go on TV there's so much negativity everywhere right and people whether you're starting a business or you whatever know, you're you doing you know what that fixes huh stop watching TV Stop watching TV. I don't watch a lot of like I don't watch news or anything like that. But no, I cut the cord. Yeah, that lit- that and cutting down my time on social media have completely changed. I have less anxiety, I have less everything because I am now concentrating more on being in person with people and starting stuff. Doesn't even have to be profitable. I have, I do many things that make no money that cost money, but it you feel like you're doing something you enjoy it yeah and eventually yeah you'll make money at it. like i've made money at all my hobbies i haven't made a living no will i maybe consistency that's yeah. another one consistency is key consistent <laughs> consistency is key so key i definitely agree man yeah. I, there's so many things i would tell myself but like that that's a big part of it is just removing that negativity yeah. focusing on the positives and i, I actually I, I suffer from anxiety and I, I openly talk about it with on facebook to people like i because yeah. like i understand where people are coming from because when i first developed anxiety i didn't know how to battle it i didn't know how to work through it i was freaking out i was taking myself to the hospital because i thought i was dying like it was a crazy instance of times in my life that i had to go through but i don't know man i just learned to accept myself accept myself for who i am that's what yeah. i like what i love who i love and either you accept me for that or you don't and once you remind yourself whatever you're being anxious about doesn't really matter in the end yeah it doesn't it dude it just melts away almost literally like it doesn't the, all matter all this that we're looking at us we're, we're all gonna be gone 100 percent. this is gonna be in a landfill one day destroyed melted <laughs> down it's wild it is crazy we're to think all about going to freaking die it is crazy to think stop about stop worrying about things that don't matter nothing matters yeah i mean things matter but not I, everything yeah matters. i always say that and everyone's like oh come on it's like yeah great yeah, okay, yeah duh, things matter. things do matter things do matter but like if you don't if the starbucks line is too long it's okay tough shit it's like, okay don't stress out. i've been don't backpacking cry. many times and it really awakens you to like i need water i need food that's all you're worried about water and food main everyone essentials. needs to go everyone needs to go backpacking <laughs> <laughs> they'll really be like god the sink what is the sink you get water comes out of the sink. You don't have to go to the river and filter your water. Oh, my God. <laughs> they practically make it easy for you. This is amazing. Now, what's your opinion on the law of attraction? Like, do you... Do I don't you, have one. You don't have an opinion on it? You don't think it exists? You don't think that if, It's too much in the weeds for me. Too much in the weeds? <laughs> it's like Jim Carrey writing himself a $10 million check, and then next thing you know, you got the roles for Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber. 
wrote himself a $10 million check and it came true. It doesn't the, work the, for everyone. There's a lot of blank in there, though, because there was probably a lot of hustle. There was, in, but they don't in, talk about no. the hustle. They just talk about, the, I'm thinking I'm going to own a Rolls Royce. I'm going to own a Rolls Royce. If you're just thinking it and you're not executing, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get a Rolls Royce. It's just going to be a thought. So therefore, the law of attraction to me is baloney. Just work for it. If you're hungry, you're going to sit there and I'm going to, I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. Nothing's happening. <laughs> Why am I not eating? You get up and go to the fridge yeah. and make something. You got to move. Next thing you know, you're not hungry anymore. Look what you just did. You just got up and you executed. I think it's bullshit to an extent. And to an extent, I, I kind of mean with, with, go with what you're saying. Like, you yeah. can't just say it and, and hope it's going to happen right. or wait for it to happen. I like, challenge anyone to message me about this too, by they, the way. Comment on it. Mess, like, whatever it is, message us about it. But, like, the honest truth behind Law of Attraction is you, step one is executing. Step one is actually having the vision, right? Having yeah. the vision and the thought and the ambition to, to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. Right. But then the next step is executing. If you don't put that work into executing, it's just going to be a thought. That's all it's yep. going to be. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. Like, trust me, like, I used to have the aspirations of running the world and ruling the world and owning all these businesses and all this, this and that and that. But I'm like, I have to work for it. It's not just going to happen. Only like five people in the world do that every generation anyways. S- seriously. That it, should not be in your mind. You should just no. be thinking of what you can accomplish right now. Get to that and then be like, okay, now what can I accomplish? Step by step process. Boom, 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 boom. And I think a big thing in between that too is failures. People, when you go through that fail. step through step fail Gotta process, fail. you're going to fail. If you you're going to fall down. You're not... Doing if it you right. don't fail, you're not moving forward. No, you're you're just you're at a stagnant, stagnant. You're m- sitting movement. still. Like right now with my wrenches business, I have not failed because I have not grown. I chose not to grow though, because that would involve way more responsibility than I wanted. I was comfortable, and that's that was my goal. Hit the comfortability. I hit the comfortability, and I got there. Now, do you feel like you? What do you think your purpose is here right now on planet Earth, in this universe, in the Milky Way? Help people, change people. Make them think differently. Help them think differently. I don't want to make anyone do anything. I want to lead by example. I just want to do cool stuff, epic things. I just want to be there for people, I guess. Yeah. I like helping people. And I see people that are struggling. I once saw a man who was fresh from the country, didn't know how to put gas in his car, and these two ladies started making fun of him. Like, that made me really sad that yeah. these ladies were making fun of him and recording him. That's terrible. It's a poor little Indian guy. So That's I, society. Day I went though. up to That's him. What I, it is. I'd show him like, here, dude, you put your car, your card in here. You pick the gas you want for your car. Do the thing. I show him how to do it. And he was just like, oh my God, fuck, thank you. <laughs> he couldn't even speak English, but you can tell he's like, thank you. Like, <laughs> thank you so much. No one's helping me. I'm like, dude, like, <laughs> this is what I want to do. That's society today though. Like people, yeah. they will stop and record before they help you. It's pretty messed up. It's, it's terrible. It's pretty it is up. so terrible. Yeah. But that's just that's just what it is today. Yeah. So to, so to to wrap it up a little bit too, um, what is one one uh, one thing of advice you give to people about life in general? Pretty much almost everything I said so far. Everything you said so far. Take a weekend. Go somewhere fun. Try something new. Be uncomfortable. Being comfortable is the biggest thing. Um. Just, just try something new. You have to, everyone needs to do something different. Um, if you're lost, hit me up. Let's talk. Let's I chat. I love talking about these things. If you have an idea, I usually help people execute on it. Like my cousin Jonathan with Yoga on the Beach Chicago gave it to me with an idea. Shout out Yoga on the Beach Chicago. And now we got it done. And we had a class yesterday. Matt was there. Matt enjoyed it. I took photos. <laughs> <laughs> shout out matt in the background yeah there's just there's a lot there's there's a lot out there yeah but people are also okay with being like this and that's okay there's nothing wrong with being comfortable you got your job you got your house you got your wife you got your kids and your dog is that if that's all you want good I'm fucking happy for you but if you want more and you don't know how to get to more you need to listen to all these podcasts there is no recipe to becoming successful um it's just hard work and talking to us and people who've already been through it i've talked to a bunch of new entrepreneurs and they it's hilarious to hear what they say because it was literally what i was saying when i started i was like oh what am i gonna do i have no one this week to pay me money to fix their things like so anxious like how do i do taxes what is this what is that now i just laugh at all of it i'm like 
this is the easy part, guys. This is the easy part. This is the easy like, part. I've gone through it. It was hard. I did it all by myself. So stubborn. Don't do business by yourself. Ask questions. Find people who know more. I started doing that, and it just got infinitely easier after that. So overall advice, ask questions. Put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Yeah. I'm leaving my house and my life and my business to go live in a camper. How more uncomfortable can you get? Very. That's <laughs> freaking crazy. Well, it's man, I, I definitely want to thank you for being on episode three. Oh. I appreciate you taking your time to talk and chat and yeah. drop some drop some gems try. on the audience. I try. Awesome, man. So thank you so much. Thank you guys for tuning in to Daily Strike. Hope you guys have a great night. Thank you. We're off. Toodles.